Remote locations often call for remote solutions. It's amazing what you can do with internet access from virtually anywhere on Earth. Today we're looking at the Chrome Remote Desktop app. It's compatible with Windows and Mac OS PC. It allows truly remote access from anywhere to your PC to browse files, conduct file transfers. So if you have a phone and a computer, then this video is for you. So stick around and let's get into it. G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're checking out Chrome Remote Desktop. We're gonna be looking at how you can remote control your PC from pretty much anywhere on earth that has internet reception. You can control it from another computer that has Chrome browser or even your mobile phone like you saw in today's intro. So let's get into it. Okay, now that you're on a computer, you're gonna to go to the Google Chrome browser and head to remotedesktop.google.com. You're gonna make sure that you're signed into a Google account in the top right corner, and here you're gonna see Set Up Remote Access. Click the Download button. Once you've downloaded the installer to your computer, click Accept and Install. It's now going to prompt to open and run that installer. Click Yes and Yes on any UAC prompts on your PC. Name your computer something that's easy to distinguish in case you add more in the future. For me, I've added Studio. Click Next and enter a PIN. The pin needs to be at least six numbers long. Click Start. Make sure to click yes on any UAC prompts and then Google will start up the remote desktop service on your computer. You can now see that our PC here, the studio, is online. If you want, you can connect to it, but we're just gonna be remote controlling our own computer. This is gonna be like some deep level of inception. Enter in the pin that you set and then click enter. All right, so this is gonna look super weird because we're remote controlling our PC, that's remote controlling our PC, and it just goes never ending. But I just want to show you over here on the side, the options that you've got. So just click, got it. On the right hand side, you've got a couple of session options. Obviously the first is disconnect, and that will end the remote session. You also then get full screen mode, which is handy if you're gonna be using it for quite a while. And you've got scale to fit and resize. These two are very handy if you were using multiple monitors. You then get all of your standard keyboard controls, like control delete, print screen F11, because if you press them on your computer that you're remoting in through, it's just gonna trigger it on that PC. So you can come here to get those. Now before when I was talking about multiple displays, here's where you would switch between one or two if you wanted to hone in on a specific display. Otherwise you can just scale them down and just move between the two on the one screen. File transfers obviously let you upload and download files. Finally you've got some standard support and stats for nerds, which like on any application will just give you the raw details of how much internet you're utilizing, any frame drops depending on the connection status. Things that I like, don't know, you probably don't really care. To finish the session, just click disconnect and you see we're back to the standard studio page. Okay, so now the computer's set up for remote desktop connections, you can access it from other computers. But you can also now with your phone, get the Chrome Remote Desktop app. Click install once you find it, make sure it's the one that has at least 10 million downloads so you know it's not a scam app and it's the legit one. Once it's installed, open up the app and it's gonna ask you to sign in with your Chrome account. Okay, now that you've launched the app, you can see the computer that you've added on your phone. Now, if you don't see that, click the hamburger button in the top left-hand corner, and make sure it's signed into the same Google account that you logged into the desktop app with on your phone. If not, there's a little down arrow on the right-hand side, click that, log in with that account, and then it will show up the same. So as you can see, we've got Studio here on the PC, that's what we called it, and Studio on my phone. So if I just tap that now, you're going to see the remote desktop connection appear on my mobile phone. But first, we've got to enter in the PIN. So for somebody to gain access to your PC without your, con your consent, they need to be able to get into your Google account, which you should have two-factor authentication on, which means they need to know your password, your mob have your mobile phone, and then also know the PIN code that you've set here. So it is quite secure, it's three steps. I only did four then. Three steps of authentication for your PC. But as you can see now, we're remote controlling the desktop PC. So you just literally swipe yourself around. You can see the mouse is moving around on screen. Now this is pretty cool. My actual favorite feature of this, which is very intuitive, is the pinch to zoom. So if there's something that's finite and you're trying to get control over, you literally just pinch 
on your screen and look how steady that is. I've got full control over every part of my computer. Pinch the zoom back out, just takes you out from the PC. If you want to move something around on the computer, just click and hold and then now you've got control of that window. So you can see I'm moving it around on my phone here and it's moving around and jiggling on the computer in front of us. Now realistically, your computer's gonna have a landscape screen. So turn your phone into landscape and whoop, there we go. We're working just the exact same so you can move around. So what if you wanted to type something in? What if you wanted to use the computer? Well, click in the type text field swipe down and there's a little keyboard icon. Tap that and you've got your phone's keyboards. Okay, so let's go to something like youtube.com forward slash camshan. All right, and there we go. So I just remote controlled this PC to type this in. And I can see everything on the screen as you can see the live view of my phone as well. Now, if you wanted to do something, so you can click around so we can go, let's watch a video, single tap. What if you want to right click something? So we want to open this video in another tab. Two fingers, tap them both together. Now it opens up the right click menu. Pinch to zoom, you can look through and be like, oh, I wanted to, um, yeah, open this in a new tab. Done, so you get all the flexibility that you normally would. You can see the second tab opening up here. Tap on that, it's now gonna change the tab on the PC. We can go over here, choose the maximize button on the computer. Done, how good is that? So now we're controlling everything on the PC from our phone. You can do the same on any other computer. It's just a fantastic method for in case you need to get something off your computer or do something on your PC quickly. So a typical use case for me was a couple of years ago, I'd play computer games like crazy. I'd be out and about and then a new game would drop. I'd buy it on my phone, grab the CD key, remote into my PC, open up Steam, insert the CD key and have the computer game downloading whilst I'm not even at home. So by the time I got home, then the computer game's already downloaded, I can launch it and play. These are the things that you can do with this technology. Now, of course, there's much more important things you could do with this technology, but that's something that I used to use it for all the time, to be able to jump on and do stuff from a remote location. Now, on the phone app, you have a few less options to control the computer. You've got control of delete and resize desktop to fit. You don't really need the scaling ones because you literally just pinch to zoom. It's that intuitive. Um, I absolutely love it. Flying around with the mouse is very, very fun. So once you're done with the remote connection, click the menu button, click disconnect, done. It'll knock off, the studio disappears, you've got full control back at your PC. Now, one thing I'm just gonna mention is that if you have music or sound playing on this PC that you've remoted into, it'll play out of the speakers. So I had that muted then for that video for our sake. If you're remoting into your PC somewhere, make sure you mute it or else someone's gonna get freaked out. My wife sometimes will be at home alone and I'll jump on here and do something and the music starts playing. Then I'm getting a message, Cam, what's going on? I can hear noises coming from your room, but you're not in there. So make sure you mute it or else you just end up like having a haunted house going on and you'll freak out all your roommates or anyone else that you live with. So that's how you control your PC from your phone or another computer. Hope this makes your life easier and just wanted to dial it back a little bit and say thank you to everyone that's subscribed so far. Uh, Bruce and I are very pleased in how well this channel is going. Uh, we're starting to get some momentum and people are jumping on board. So if you're a long time viewer and you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do so. Really appreciate to have you on board. If you're new here, I'm Cam, this is Bruce, and here's some of our older videos coming up here and here. We make new videos every week, and next week we're doing a 360 virtual reality tour of the studio and some of the other locations that we shoot on the channel here. So, hope you can stick around for that, because you're gonna be able to pull up your phone and move around or click and drag in full 360 space. And uh, this, is, this is a big mammoth task. So I'm gonna be excited for you guys to check that out. Bruce is excited for you to be in 360 VR. He's gonna show you some of his tricks. So you better, you better subscribe up or else he's gonna be sad. If he's doing all these tricks and flips and stuff for you and you aren't watching, oh, I don't know, man. Did you hear that? Maybe they might not watch. Nah, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. You wouldn't say that to him. <laughs> all right, we'll catch you in the next video. And uh, peace out. Have a good one. Have a good day. We'll be here, or I'll be here, that's if I'm not, you know, eaten to death by this little snapping monster of the dog. <laughs> right, catch up.